Today we're going to go over me Sarah coding my rifle. Uh, this is going to be a brand new build. I'm just making a video to show you how I did it. Hopefully it helps somebody else. Couldn't find a whole lot of videos on YouTube. But the first thing you're going to need is your gun parts. So here I have my BCM rail. This is the MCMR rail. I got my buffer tube. I have my upper receiver and my strip lower. I'm obviously not going to put all of the springs and stuff in my lower until it's painted. You're going to need some acetone, which we have over here. And then I have some degreaser. I have my Preval sprayer. And then my Cerakote itself. Uh, this is a 4 ounce bottle. The biggest thing, if you've never painted anything before, uh, is the prep work. So I will be wearing a respirator. And I will be wearing gloves, especially when I'm handling the acetone and the Cerakote. I don't know how hard that is to get off of skin or anything. But um, you can see here, I have all of this plastic down uh, I did kind of do a little prep station and as you can see I have hooks hanging up on a makeshift paint line here and then I just kind of covered everything in my garage with plastic so I don't end up uh, making a mess in my garage the color I'm gonna be painting my gun is uh, burnt bronze and I should also mention that I'm using Cerakote C series that is their air dry series you don't need to bake it in the oven. Uh, they do suggest baking your parts in the oven first and then painting them, but I'm just going to try and do everything with the Prevail sprayer. I figured worst case scenario, if I have to redo it, I have to redo it, but we're going to try this method and see how it goes. All right, so first things first, this is a nice flat dark earth color on this rail. It's kind of a shame. Uh, hopefully it's going to turn out nice. But I'm just going to sit here and rough everything up. Uh, I will update you as I go. I'm not going to make you watch this entire process, but... Thing I wanted to highlight here is you don't want the finish completely stripped off. You still want the original paint kind of roughed up. You see I kind of dug in a little deep here but I'm going to keep scrubbing this. This lower is almost done. And then you can see all the green that got stuck in here from the scotch Bright pad so that's what the degrease here and the acetone is going to help strip any of the oils and all the dirt and everything off. When you are taking the finish off like this it's important that you go in circular motions different directions you don't want to just go you know all in one grain and just have everything one way you want to rough it up as much as you can for this rail here in order to get in between the picatinny slots I just kind of took my sandpaper and folded it and scraped as best I could in between I did the same thing for my upper with the rail on that as well So now I have this uh, metal dish, I'm just going to soak my parts in that foam degreaser for a while, uh, the rail's not obviously going to fit in there so I'm going to have to kind of move it around a little bit and spray it, but I'm going to get all the dirt out in this dish and then I have other dishes that I'm going to use and give everything a little bit of an acetone bath, let that sit for a while and then once everything is dry I should be able to hang them and start painting. super clean I decided that I'm going to take some brake clean and uh, spray it down as well and then I'm going to put it in the acetone
Alright, so everything's been sitting in acetone here for about 15 minutes. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang everything up on my hooks here. Full disclosure, I'm not a professional painter. I'm just an average guy. It might turn out like crap. I have used spray paint. Uh, hopefully it's just as easy as regular spray paint. We'll see. Uh, the key is to not put one thick coat. It's to just do nice, light, even coats and then just keep adding to them and building on them. So let's see how it turns out. sure I have even coverage trying to allow for drying time in between coats but uh, so far it seems to be applying really well it is the ambient temperature is probably about 45 50 degrees and they recommend leaving it sit for I think 45 minutes to an hour and then it's not tacky anymore but it takes like a full five days to cure so I'm gonna leave them sit here for probably four or five days before I put my gun together but I will uh, give you guys an update once everything is dry. I'm going to continue touching up and then uh, let it sit for a week. First things first, yes the gun is unloaded. No, I don't have to prove it to you. Uh, the Cerakote here, it held up super well so far. I'm really happy with it. You know, the H series, which is their Bacon series, is going to hold up a lot better than the air dried stuff but considering I just did it in a rattle can I'm extremely happy with it you know it's gonna hold up better than regular spray paint uh, the way I did it is not the way that they recommend doing it they want you to use an actual legitimate spray gun hooked up to an air compressor and they want you to sandblast everything and they want you to bake it in the oven before you paint it uh, obviously I didn't do any of those I just took scotch bright pad roughed everything up and some sandpaper or two and then I you know cleaned everything and degreasing is the most important part you want to make sure everything is degreased because if you don't get all the grease and oil out of your parts and then you paint it and then all that oil comes back out you know it's going to ruin your paint job um i think it'll hold up 
I wanted to give it some time by putting different attachments and everything on my gun, give it time to kind of, you know, get a little bit of wear and tear, if you will, see how it holds up. There were some spots here, like uh, right here, I had a sling swivel mount and uh, I moved it. I wanted to see kind of how everything would hold up. I've taken things off several times here. I have like my flashlight mount I've moved. Um, there, there were a little bit of scuff marks, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's normal. I'm not going to cry because I have a little bit of usage shown on my gun. Um, the same thing, you know, I had right here. My When I was putting my scope on, it actually was kind of canted and I didn't realize it. And the screw was digging into the, the rail here. But what I discovered is you can take a Q-tip and then make sure you shake up, you know, any leftover paint you have in the bottle. And then use your Q-tip to kind of touch it up like a little paintbrush. And it actually works really well. It fills in scratches. So whatever I have left over that Cerakote, I'm just going to do that from time to time. You know, if I nick it up or whatever. But one of the things I didn't get super, super great coverage on were in between the rails here on these little ledges. Um, I didn't spray up enough when it was hanging. You can't really tell. You know, this isn't a professional job I paid for it's something I did myself so you know I find that acceptable and uh, overall like I love this color it kind of changes depending on the light when you're looking at it it also looks a little bit different in sunlight so I'll try and get some bureau footage for you but I I would definitely recommend doing it you know the Cerakote's not super cheap it was $45 to have it shipped to my house but, and then you got to pay for the, you know, scotch Bright pads and the acetone. So it's not super, super cheap, but it'll hold up a lot better. And this is a gun I'll have for the rest of my life. So, you know, I don't mind spending a little bit more for a paint job that's going to hold up through the life of the gun. You might have also noticed in the footage of me painting, I had painted the forward assist button and then I also painted the dust cover. I left the dust cover on. I didn't really like the look of having everything solid burnt bronze. Uh, I like the, the two-tone black and burnt bronze color here. So I ordered a different forward assist button. This is a uh, striker tactical or something uh, forward assist button. And then uh, the dust cover, I ordered a, a custom one online. It says, we the people. And then when you flip it open it says shall not be infringed i thought that was kind of cool considering the times we're living in i thought it fit pretty well but thank you for watching the video uh hopefully you enjoyed it if you have any questions i'm usually pretty good about responding in the comments so thanks